passion for life. We just supported his team that be bringing them life. All right, welcome to the Blessed Beach Show. My name is Marcus Sullivan. Got a special guest in the building. Can't say how long I've been trying to get this interview. Every time he comes to town, I always miss him in and around Houston. Arthur, uh, producer, <laughs> husband, Devon Franklin. What's happening, man? Yo, what's going on, man? Everything what's up, good? Marcus, man? Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm glad we finally were able to get here. Yes, yes. You got a big event coming up in town. Yes. Um, Kingdom, King, Kingdom Builder Center. Yes. Um, I think it's called the Refresher. Yes, it's and, a women's conference. Right, and you're ministering. Yes, I'm speaking um, at uh, the 1 o'clock session. Okay. I'm really, really excited about it. It's being put on by Windsor Village uh, Church. I mean, people from all around the, the world mm -hmm. are coming to the conference. And so I'm in town and I'm um, excited to, you know, one, to be here. And it's going to be an amazing experience. And so, you know, it's still not too late for people to come out yeah. um, and come through and enjoy it. And I'm also excited to be presenting on my new book, The Truth About Men. Yeah, let's get right into it. Truth About Men. Yeah. Dude, I was in the barbershop, and I said, yeah, I'm talking to Devon Frank. And they was like, what's up with this book? And he, what, he's <laughs> oh, dropping, he's well, you, dropping the gems I love it. So us. you yeah. were in the barbershop, and they were they've already brought it up. Well I, well, I was telling them I was doing it. I said I was doing the interview, yeah. and I guess they saw the interview on the on, Breakfast on Club. Club right? yeah. And they so they was like, no, no, you got to ask them why he, what's this book about, <laughs> right? So the truth about, man, let's I talk love about the it. title first. How did you come up with all of that? Man, you know what? Um... That's a good question. I don't even, it was God that gave me that title. Yeah. When I originally did the book proposal for the book, um, I didn't have the title. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, as I was writing the book, that's what it, it that's just, it came to me clear as day. Right. Oh, this is the truth. Yeah. The truth about men. That's yeah. what it is. And then also the tagline, what women, women, and, women and men need to know. Yeah. It was important because this is a book for both women and men. Yeah. This is not just a book for men about men. This is a book about men and for women too. Yeah. Because it's really important because women don't understand us. And, at all. Yeah. And and how can you be successful with something you don't understand? And so I wanted to write a book to give them information, but also to give us information as men about ourselves yeah. and what we need to do in order to become the men we were created to be. Devon Franklin in here on the Blessed Beast Show. Um, are all men dogs or all men sheep? Okay, great. These are yeah, these are the questions. These yeah. are the questions, yeah. man, that perplex me. That that really motivated me to write the book. So the answer to the first one: No, all men are not dogs. Men yeah. are not dogs. Period. Yeah. Um, and I talk about that in the introduction of the book. Okay. Um, however, we can behave like an untrained dog yeah. when we allow lust to run and ruin our life. Yeah. And so this is the struggle, and this is the truth about men: is that every man struggles uh, with lust. And I call I, I describe lust as a you know um, a selfish impulse mm -hmm. for personal professional financial or sexual fulfillment okay. by any means necessary, even if those means are detrimental right. because lust wants what it wants, whenever it wants it, however it wants it. Yeah. So I use the metaphor of dog training to describe what that lust is. So I call in the book, lust, the dog. Uh, I also believe that every man has love in them, love yep. of ourselves, love okay. of God, love of the woman in our life, love of family, love of community. Right. I call love the master. Yeah. So for us to be the men we were called to be, we have to master the dog. Okay. We have to put love and control of lust. We have to put selflessness over selfishness. Yeah. And this is where the struggle is. Because every day yeah. there's a war in between us, yeah. in, in us, yeah. in between love and lust, right. between the master and the dog, and who's going to win out. Okay. So why do men act outside their nature? Mm. Why do men cheat? Because they've given themselves over to the dog. Are men naturally cheaters? I don't think so. Okay. I think that we have just been conditioned to live with no restraint. To live with no discipline. Wow. You know, as men, we're like, oh, boys will be boys. The more women you have, the better. Yeah. The more sex you have, the better. better. Yeah. Whether you're in the church, outside church, that's what we're taught. So what happens is the dog in us is well fed, but the master is malnourished. So we don't know how to love. The love in us isn't strong. Yeah. But the lust, we know how to fill that. Yeah. And what happens is lust corrupts our spirit. The dog corrupts. It, okay. it corrupts how we think. It corrupts how we act. Yeah. It corrupts how we move. Yeah. Why? Because, you know, we're, we're listening. A lot of listeners are, you know, Christian men. I'm a Christian man. Right. But here's the, re the reality. Even as a, uh, even when I was dating, you know, I, I first of all, I want to be clear. I write this book from a standpoint of I have a dog too. I'm not pointing the finger. I'm, I'm not man. saying that I haven't mastered. I'm not saying that I've mastered the dog. That's I master. Is. I work on it. Okay. Right? It's still in me. Right. Right? right? And so part of that, what I realized is that even when I was dating, okay. you know, and I waited for a, a good period of time um, before I got married, but I still was not always leading with the master. And how is that? Because I would, I would, the dog in me would not uh, not allow me sometimes to be honest with the women I was dating. 
Mm. So I'd be dating a few of them. I wouldn't tell them what was really going on. And what was happening? I was keeping them in a gray area because I wanted to get from them what I wanted. Yeah. So what I began to realize was like, wait a minute. I, if I'm going to be who I, who I say I am, right. I have to practice mastery. I have to put their needs above my own needs for pleasure, yeah. which means if I'm not serious, I got to tell them I'm not serious. Yeah. I'm not going to lead you on. So these are all the different ideas and themes that I talk about in the book to give us as men um, a reality check, okay. truth and help, because most women don't know how, how much we struggle. We don't have models on how to communicate. We don't have models on how to love. Mm. So a lot of us are just left to fend for ourselves. Absolutely. And many times we do it incorrectly. So it's not about villainizing men or saying we're bad. We're, we do bad things. Yeah. But there's a way we can rectify that when we start to look in the mirror and make a decision to be the men we were created to be. Truth about man, Devon Franklin dropping gems early, <laughs> early in the joint. Man, um, what do you say about the cliché all women like a little bad boy. Yeah. Yeah. So so, so here, here's what I say. I, I would say that there's a lot that goes on in the culture. So I'm, I'm going to go back and I'm going to come I'm gonna come forward in a minute. So so when we go back to, you know, Genesis, um, you go back to the Bible, okay. you know, it says that, you know, at, God created Adam. And then God said it's not good for Adam to be alone. And as a result, he took the rib. He created Eve. Right. So when Eve came into the earth, she was completely whole. Adam was the one that was missing something. Absolutely. Okay. So when Adam sees Eve, he says, for this is why, you know, a, a, a man should leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Yeah, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Right. So the inherently in our design, men inherently need a woman. The woman was already created whole. Yeah. Why is this so important? Because the culture yeah. has flipped it around. Okay. If you're a woman, you're not whole unless you have a man. And for men, right. hey, if you're a man, hey, you don't even need a woman. Be, be afraid of commitment. Wait and don't, you know, fear marriage. Push it back as far as you can. Yeah. Right? right? So so what happens is the culture begins to twist things. Right. So how is that related to the question you asked? Yeah. Because a lot of times what women what women say is, oh, yeah, I want that, you know, that guy that, you know, that, that roughneck or, yeah. you know what I mean, that yeah. guy with that swag yeah. and that edge. And yeah. so what I write in the book is I say what you really want is a guy who practices mastery because you want if you go for a guy where you see him behave in in ways that mirror the dog where it's bravado and it's in it's you know sexuality you know just on display yeah. if you do that you can't if you date the dog you can't then want to marry the master it doesn't work that way yeah. so so a lot of times women you know are attracted to that because the culture has put a premium on an external view of what manhood is yeah. not really evaluating internal if you want a man who's a real man, that's a man who takes care of responsibility, yeah. who pays his bills, yeah. who's respectful, yeah. who may not be the guy that's out there, you know, going to, you know, curse you out. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have the Tims or whatever. Man. He may tat it up. That may not be him. Right. right? right. You could still have those things and still be a master. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So for women, I wrote in the book, it's important to begin to look at mastery is really what you're attracted to. Right. You're really attracted to a man with confidence, yeah. a man with responsibility, accountability, Absolutely. all those other things that you say, you know, oh, that's I, I'm attracted to that on the outside. Those are external things. Yeah. And those external things, and we have seen it. This is why we're in the trouble we are now. Yeah. Is because men have brought it, bought into. Oh, in order for me to get a woman, I gotta have that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I gotta Absolutely. act that way. Yeah. And what we're seeing is broken families, broken homes, broken yeah. hearts. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we gotta stop, and yeah. we gotta find a new way to do this. Man, when we're just talking about lust and everything, right? You know the old saying: you can't turn up into a house. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Do all men cheat, or once a cheater, always a cheater? Right. Yeah. Um, are those, can you actually get away from that? You just say like, man, I have, and I'm, I'm saying to myself too, I have to work at it every day. There you go. Right. So can you actually be 100% delivered from being that dog? Okay. Here's the thing. Uh, we as men have a dog in us. Okay. Uh, the dog never goes away. Mm. It's always there. Mm. Paul said to, to, you know, God, listen, I got this thorn in my side. Mm. Would you, would you take it out? And God said, my grace is sufficient for you after he asked three times. Yeah. Never took it out, right? It's a metaphor. The idea that we can eventually get victory over this wholeheartedly, I don't believe exists. Mm -hmm. We have it. So that's why I point to mastery. That's why I point to learning how to love. Okay. Because what happens is we build our character. Okay. When we wrestle with something, but we say, you know what? I'm going to learn self-control. 
I'm going to learn discipline. I'm going to learn how to manage my urges. I'm going to learn how to navigate and, and control my sexual appetite. I'm going to learn how to control my appetite for money, power, and, and success. Yeah. Though That's where the strength comes in. Right. So it's, it comes in the process. Okay. So I sit before you saying, hey, I work on mastery, okay. right? I got it in me. You know right, what I mean? I got right. this dog in me. Do you, and, does a man tell a woman that? Man, look, I got this in me. Yeah. Okay, but here's the difference. Okay. Here is the difference. There's a difference between saying, yo, I got this in me, so you're going to have to just excuse whatever I do, versus saying, listen, I need you to know I love you and I struggle, but you, but I need you. Yeah. You know, your love, yeah. uh, us coming together, that actually helps me get control over this. Yeah. There's a difference yeah. in admitting it from a vulnerable standpoint yeah. or a difference in admitting it because you want to use that as an excuse just to do what you want to do. You think men, that could be a big one of our one of our problems is the communication part oh. of that. So say 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 take yes. a newlywed couple. Sure. Right. They live at five the first six months, right? <laughs> and he's still struggling with the pornography. He's still struggling with I'm going out. You know. Yep. Is that the hardest thing to do? Is communicate that as as a man? Like yes, baby, I, I got this pornography thing. Yeah, it, listen, I, I just did in a um, uh, truth talk um, to promote the book. I would, I've been doing these truth talks on Instagram. Okay. And, um, you know, and Kirk, I interviewed Kirk Franklin, mm. and we had a powerful conversation about this very subject. And what you're saying is yes, when we are masters, when we practice mastery, it starts with honesty, mm. it starts with transparency, and it starts with trusting that the woman in our life is the right one that we can have a safe space with. And, to that example, he mentioned in our truth talk, which is up on YouTube right now, that when he got married, you know, one of the things that he had to admit to her is that he was still having this pornography problem. And it was a powerful revelation. And he said in doing it, it actually helped him ultimately get control over it because anything we suppress, we empower. So the dog in us likes to hide in the shadows, likes to keep things secret likes to keep things out of the light. Yeah. But the master says, no, bring it into the light. Yeah. Because when it's in the light, we actually can get power over it. So to your to your question, mm -hmm. yes, I think it, there is a lot of power in admitting it yeah. and saying, hey, here's an area of struggle. And I think it's so important, and this is where, I, one of the reasons I wrote the book, because women have got to understand this, and I want them to, because yeah. this book is not about what women have to do better. Yeah. It's about just what women need to know. You, you know, It's about what we as men got to do better. Right. We, we're we the ones that got to make the change. Right. But here's one of the things that's so important. Women say, we want the truth. Okay? okay? Yeah. So then, a man gives you the truth. Yeah. And then what happens? When yeah. that truth doesn't line up with your idea of the truth, some women will get angry at him. Uh, they'll vilify him. Yeah. They'll talk bad about him. But here's what I know. Mm -hmm. The moment a man opens up to a woman, and he makes her feel less than, and she makes him feel less than, that may be the last time that man opens up. Because when a man gets vulnerable, it's a hard thing. Yeah. And, and for women listening, even if you are shocked by whatever truth, mm -hmm. before you react, just take it in for a minute. Yeah. Because if he's telling you, he's not telling you to hurt you. Yeah. He's telling you because he loves you. Wow. He's telling you because he doesn't want any secrets. Yeah. And and that this is why our marriages are so messed up because there's so many secrets. So many. We, we, don't, we, we don't even practice truth. Yeah. So this idea of saying, hey, you know, I struggle here yeah. and this is where I need your help. Part of being able to have a great marriage or a great relationship is where you can openly communicate. Mm -hmm. And that's where most times we miss it. Man. That's where the power is. Bro, I just made 10 years. Uh, well, actually, I make 10 years next week. But uh, I think me and my wife learned that openness communication, real, raw, uncut, at about year eight. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And wow. I didn't realize when, like, some of the stuff that I was like, I know I can't tell her that. Yeah. When I finally said, forget it, I'm going to tell her. Yeah. It was all good. But this is why yeah. I, I'm so excited about this book yeah. and why I'm just on a mission to bring this truth to the world because of what you just said yeah. is that so often we're afraid. Yeah. We're afraid if I tell her, she's not going to be able to handle it. Yeah. She's afraid if I tell him, he's going to leave. Yeah. So what happens is that we are never 100 percent in the relationship mm -hmm. where we're, we're, you know, sometimes 70 percent, you know, sometimes 60 percent. However, right. if we can't be 100 percent, that means it's a liability yeah. because if I can't be 100 percent, I need to find an outlet where I can actually be myself. And if I can't be myself in the relationship, I'm going to seek out sometimes detrimental places to do that. Boy, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Hey, we're talking, man. Devon Franklin is in the building. Real quick, talk to the the man. Yeah. That hears this his whole life, man. You're the head of the household. Yeah. What does that really mean? Um, you know, here here's what that really, really means. When you go back to um, the book of Ephesians, I believe it's chapter five. Um, you know, the Bible says, "Women submit yourselves to your husbands," yeah. but then it says, uh, "Husbands submit yourselves to your wife." 
Okay. Yeah. These are independent commands. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say women submit if he loves yeah. and doesn't say husbands love if he submits. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if she submits. Right. These are independent commands. Okay. And so what it means to be, quote unquote, the head of the household, it means to love. And the Bible says for husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. He gave his life for the church. What does that mean? He put the church's needs above his own needs. Right. He practiced sacrifice. Right. He practiced long suffering. Right. He practiced forgiveness. And he put the well-being of the church uh, as his number one priority. Mm -hmm. When we as men lead that way, yeah. that's what really being the head means. Yeah. That we lead. We sacrifice. We love. Yeah. We put the greater good yeah. above all our needs. That's what it looks like. Yeah. It's not about cook my food. Right. It's not about, oh, you got to have my clothes ready. It ain't that. Right. That's an old model of right. manhood that's got us in this problem to begin with. Right. It's about how we love. Yeah. And when we as men can learn to do that, yeah. especially with the women and the children yeah. in our lives yeah. and the communities, we're going to see a massive change in this culture. Absolutely. And uh, we're not going to even dive into the women submit part, but you can Google that. And I'm sure you, <laughs> you, sure you got All right. But I, I do also want to ask you about... Um, Love versus respect. Yeah, yeah. For a man. Yeah. Because I, I I heard the phrase men equate love with respect or something like that, mm -hmm. and women equate love with just like affection. Mm -hmm. Am mm -hmm. I right? How far am I on that? You know, I, I think every man is is different. I mean, my my true feeling is that as men, because we're not taught to love mm -hmm. and we aren't necessarily taught how to receive love, yeah. sometimes uh, our fail safe is respect. Yeah. Right. It's like, oh, well, you got to respect me. Well, what does that actually mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Versus like, here's what it means to be loved. It means to be accepted yeah. for who you are, when you are. I mean, That's love. Yeah. Right. Like like someone could respect you, but not love you at all. I respect your authority. Mm -hmm. I respect your position, but mm -hmm. I don't love you. Right. Someone could respect you, but not accept you. Right. I think real love is about acceptance. Yeah. And I think that's what we as men are truly deeply seeking. And sometimes when we can't articulate that, we default to, oh, you got to respect me. Right. But really what we really are saying is I want you to accept me. And, and, and what acceptance means is I don't want you to accept everything I do and just give me a pass. Mm -hmm. Even the man that knows he's doing wrong wants the woman in his life to hold him accountable and responsible. Yeah. Because when she doesn't. Yeah. The byproduct is he may disrespect her, okay. right? Yeah. So as a man, again, it's not the woman's fault by any means. But as men, we want acceptance. Yeah. That is what I think love is really, really about. Because as, as men, we're broken, yeah. right? And when we're broken, we're broken because we're told growing up to be a man, you have to earn money. Yeah. You got to be the dominant one. You got to be powerful. Right. You got to be this. And no man fits that box. Yeah. So what happens? The box breaks us. Because as a kid, when we don't do what people think men should do, yeah. stop crying. Ooh. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Oh, you know, stop being a sissy. Yeah. Stop being a wimp. Be tough. Be tough. Yeah. So what happens? We're, we, we're taught, don't talk. Yeah. Hold it in. Because yeah. I got to survive. And if I'm honest, I'm going to get beat up. Yeah. I'm going to get talked about. Yeah. So I hold it in. So by the time I get to the chance of, of learning how to love, we don't know how to do it. Wow. So it's hard to learn the process. So really what we're saying is we just want someone to accept us and see the master in us yeah. so that we can not only have the environment to do the work, but that love helps us, mot motivates us to do the work. And so, again, I wrote this book so that, you know, it's not about what women have to do better. It's about we have to do better. But it's also about us as men being honest about our need for love and honest about our need to work through the brokenness that we have so that we don't continue to inflict pain. Because we're most men are in pain, and that's why I believe men inflict pain. And when I'm saying pain, I don't mean there are I don't mean physical violence. That happens. Absolutely. But I'm saying in a, in a wide variety, I think more men are guilty of inflicting emotional pain okay. on women, yeah. more so than physical pain. Right. And that emotional pain becomes because we're in emotional pain, and we don't even acknowledge it. Again, this is not to justify it. It's to identify why it happens so we can point to the right solution. So, I, so for us as men, we have to get to the point where we decide, what kind of man do I want to be? Yeah. You know, do I want to keep going around chasing tail? You know, do I want to keep using money, you know, to, to play around yeah. when I have nothing to show for it? I'm empty on the inside. And this happens inside and outside the church. What kind of man do I want to be? Absolutely. At a certain point, we got to decide. And for me personally, I had to make the decision, even when I was dating, who do I want to be? You know, do I really want to be this man that finds my value in how many women I date? Or do I really want to be the man that finds the value in the mirror? The guy that I looked back at me in the mirror he's valued all already. already that. And I had to wrestle with that. And when I came, God gave me a vision where 
I was at the, my wedding in my, in this vision, and I was at the altar getting ready to get married, mm. and I turned around, and uh, no, the minister said, turn around, mm. and all the women I dated yeah. were littered across the, the center aisle, but the issue was they were all cut open. They were slain open, Ooh. and God said, do you think it was worth all of them to get here? Mm. And the vision convicted me so much yeah. that I said, I don't want to be that kind of man. Again, didn't make me perfect, but it made me commit to wanting to be better yeah. and to do better, be more intentional, yeah. be more honest, try to be the better man and put the greater good above my own desires for pleasure and, and, and even potentially companionship at certain times. Yeah. And so that's where every man has to live. Who do I want to be? What do I want to be? And the result will be, I think, a better relationship not only with ourselves but with any woman that's in our orbit. Truth about man, Arthur Devon Franklin, y'all, he's giving it to us this morning. Um, you being very transparent. Yes. When you were writing this book, how long did it take you to write? Um, uh, well, I mean, I had the idea years ago, so technically <laughs> it's taken a long time. But in terms of actual writing time, it took a couple months, you know. I said about four months, five months. At home in the marriage when, you, when you're writing and you get in that groove and you're being real transparent, the dynamic or how was the energy in the house? You know, the energy in the house was, um, I mean, it was good, but I mean, here's the other thing. The the difference was I was in Winnipeg, Canada, producing my film Breakthrough, um, which is in my new movie, which comes out in April. So, yeah, and, and yeah, man, I can't wait for y'all to see it. It's amazing. And, um, and Megan was in uh, Toronto shooting a movie. So we weren't in our normal house situation in Los Angeles. So what was happening is that, man, I was so deep in this truth that, you know, most, the plan was every weekend I was going to go visit her. Okay. Because I was in Winnipeg, Canada. She was in Toronto. Right. So it's almost like going from Houston to New York. You know, it's not su it's not super far. Okay. But, man, when I was in this group, I said, babe, I, I can't come this weekend. Wow. I was like, babe, I can't come. Like, there were three weekends in a row where I yeah. canceled on yeah. her. And I said, babe, I just need you to rock with me on this. Yeah. You know, I got to get through this book. God has given me some stuff. Yeah. And if I come visit you and try to write there, it's going to throw me off. And, and to her, her credit, yeah. man, she said, no problem. Yeah. You know, and she wrote with me on that. So the dynamic was uh, was good, but I but I had to have space. Gotcha. Because I needed to be able to tap into what what God had already put within me and yeah. what I needed to say. And some of this truth, man, in this book, I mean, you know, it, it even when I read it, yeah, I'm man. like, dear Lord, did I write that? Yeah. I was going to ask you, what, what, when you got that finished copy, when she saw it? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, she listen from the moment I told her about this book, she has been 1000 percent supportive. She yeah. said. This is before the book was even be even done. She said, this is a movement. She's like, we need this. She's like, honey, tell your truth. I mean, because that's kind of how we operate, you know, and, and I'll be honest. She really has inspired me uh, a tremendous amount in that regard uh, in terms of, you know, she owns her truth. You know, she she uh, doesn't try to fit into any box. And nice. and and I think she's always wanting people to accept her for who she is. And as a result, she accepts people for who they are. Yeah. And she really models that in such a powerful way for me that it really helped me write the book. Yeah. And I don't know that I could have written this book this way without uh, our love and our marriage and her modeling that for me. Absolutely. Man, truth about men. I know men want to read it to say, yeah. how accurate is this? Yes. And I know women are going to read it and go, let me find out some stuff. That's right. right. Um, and I'm sure it's going to benefit both, both sides. But when you was writing it from a standpoint, you being transparent, who did you feel... Who would you say you felt was going to say, going to gravitate to it more? Honestly, um, I really thought, I really think and know, and even when I was writing, it felt like both would. Yeah. Um, but but here's what I was thinking of, you know, as I was writing, I'm like, yo, as men, we've got to become better. Yeah. The, so much of what's happening in the culture is because we, as men, are not doing our work. We're just using our gender as an excuse to behave any way we want, uh, even in the church. And I talk about this, you know, I mean, the church really fosters a culture of suppression. You know, it's like, OK, you know, so what do you do when you get an urge? How do you handle it? You know, we're, we're holy. But what do you do when you get horny? How do you handle that? Yeah. And so for many times, men are just told, hey, if you're horny, go do something about it. That. You know, go handle it. Yeah. Go handle it. Yeah. And so as a result, what happens? We don't view women as the, the daughters of God that they are. Okay. We view them as objects for our pleasure. Yeah, and when we're done with our pleasure, we move on. Yeah. And, and, and that idea 
is so toxic, and but it's so embedded in the culture. I was writing this book thinking, how do we change the culture? How can I write something that a man who reads this that may not be wanting to do their work, that may be giving themselves over to the way of the dog, that that man would read this and say, hmm. Yeah. I'm convicted. I mean, what was so powerful about, what is so powerful about that Breakfast Club interview that you talked about earlier yeah. is, man, I've got men tweeting me from all over the world. Amen. Dude, you're convicted me. He's like, man, he's like, you're right. I've been living the way of the dog. I've been giving myself over to the dog and I want to get control. Yeah. And that's the secret is that is that uh, we, we know we're empty when we operate that way. Yeah. We know it, yeah. but we can't always articulate it. So what happens is when we feel uncomfortable as men, a lot of times we act out. So you'll see men, you know, drink more or sex more yeah. or just be louder. To me, that sometimes is a revelation of an insecurity, yes. an emptiness. Yeah. And so I wrote the book when I was thinking, you know, about that. I was thinking about that man, yeah. that man that may not yet be doing their work. What can I write that is honest and transparent by opening up from me right. that may help that person say, you know what? I got to do better and I want to do better. And not only that, I actually can see now how to do better. Because there's steps and tools and tips in the book. Amen. It's not just don't do. Yeah. It's not just don't look. It's like, no, here's how you handle it. Yeah. Here's how you manage it so that it doesn't manage you. And then I also thought about the woman We're reading the book. I also thought, like, okay, what does she need to know Amen. that she doesn't know? And, and, and what you don't know will hurt you. And this is why this is why I want to give women information so that even if they're dealing with a man who is not yet allowing the master to lead their life, okay. they have information that will allow them to better navigate their dealings so they can identify, oh, you, that's the dog in you is running your situation. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I'm going to keep moving. There you go. Or you know what? The master in you is, is actually really leading. Yeah. Or in a marriage sense, you know, you've been married for, you know, you yeah. said 10 yeah. years. I've been married for seven years. Yeah. So I talk about it in the book. Um, there was this uh, old preacher that said, uh, there's a king and a fool in every man, similar to the master and the dog. Okay. And he said his wife, whenever he would act a fool, she would talk to the king. And she said talking to the king and him actually helped bring the king out of him. Wow. So in our situation, giving yeah. women information, it can help her understand, got it, there's a master in my man. I've always known it, yeah. but now I have a framework and a dialogue yeah. to be able to articulate it. So when he starts to act the dog, yeah. I can talk to that master. Yeah. Bring that master out. No, baby, you better than that. Yeah. I know you got it in yeah. you. Instead Let's talk. Yeah. That's right. Instead of just yeah. writing them off saying, yeah. oh, I'm married to a dog. No, yeah. no, no. You're married to a mighty man who has power in him. And sometimes he does need that woman in his life who really is the, the only person that may be able to get to him to speak into that master and call that master out of him. So I, I wrote for men and women yeah. so that they could both have the information. We could have the information to do what hasn't been done, which is conversation, man. It's all about the truth. We got to start telling the truth, talking the truth, especially in communities of faith. We got to stop the culture of suppression from spreading. You know, anything we are in denial about, we empower. And, not, and what do we empower to do? To destroy us. Yeah. And so we have to start saying, hey, we all struggle. This thing is hard, but we can get the victory over it. Y'all just have some church right here on the Bless Me Show, man. <laughs> Truth about men, how can they get to this book? Man, listen, it's it's available right now. Um, it, I just found out when I, I landed that uh, this book is in the top 30 on Amazon, which mm. is just unbelievable. Mm. Praise God. Yeah. So you can get it everywhere books are sold. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it right here in Houston at any Barnes & Noble. Yeah, uh, you know, check it out. Get the book. You can get it on iTunes, Kindle, yeah. Audible, everywhere. Every format books are sold. You can get the Truth About Men. Love it. Ladies, get your man that book. Walk slowly when you give it to him. Uh, <laughs> fellas, go get that book, man. It's going to be our little devotion thing. We'll try to do it together. I live around the corner from the Barnes and Nobles, and I'm, I'm about to support Dope. you, man. Um, social Thank media, you. how people get at you? you said man, you, yeah. yeah, man, yeah. I'm on Twitter and Instagram. My handle is at Devon Franklin, D-E capital V-O-N Franklin. And I'm also on Facebook at Devon Franklin Official. Gotta love it, man. You watching this on any of the platforms, you listening to this live on the air. Don't pull over. Don't close your eyes, but go ahead and stretch your hands out. Uh, Devon, take us out here with a prayer, man. Yeah, man. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, dear Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, dear God, you said the truth will set us free. So I'm praying right now for anybody listening, anybody watching, that they would not be overwhelmed by their struggle, that they would not feel helpless, dear Lord, but you would know and let them know that the truth will set them free, that you have a plan for our lives. For any man that's struggling, dear God, give him hope right now. Let him know, dear God, there's a master in him, dear Lord, and every master must be submitted to you, the master. For women listening to this right now, I pray, dear God, that they would their pain would be 
eased. I pray, dear Lord, right now their heart would be healed and that they would know, dear God, that there is a better day for all of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for bringing us this far, and I thank you for taking us where we need to be. Amen. Amen. I'm your host, Marcus Sullivan, at Marcus Sullivan Live. Follow the show at Blessed Beast Media. God bless the beast. We out of here.